So I want to share some thoughts on my experience with Odissi dance and I think actually it came to me when I was about I want to say 16, 17 and that was the first time I started to experience any kind of Indian classical dance but what I love about Odissi and I've always maintained this is it has an incredible, well it is a meditative experience. The fact that so much of the poetry behind it is rooted in something devotional helps me connect to something, something so much bigger than myself. Um, Shushmita, you have decided to zone in on a particular sculpture here in the gallery. Perhaps you can explain to us why. So, uh, Manisha, we have in Odyssey, um, a lots of, um, we take a lot of the, um, the dances based from a lot of the temple culture. So, there are two sort of types of things. One is the Yogini temple in Hirapur. That is the only temple in Bhuvaneshwar, just on the outskirts. So, um, the Yogini is, um, she is Shakti. So, she is Shiva's other half. Um, where you know the energy comes from and the sort of the newer version of it as we know is the Durga um, you know which sort of the puja and now it's a heritage as well so a lot of um, the Odissi movements comes from there but also we have something called the Apsaras um, so here we have got a beautiful picture of Yogini um, as you can see uh, and then on the, on the top there are some sculptures from um, Narasimha who is one of the incarnations of Vishnu um, Vishnu being Jagannath um, from Orissa and later on we will capture some of the Apsaras um, and a lot of the temples um, you, you sort of see in Orissa particularly the Konara temple is full, full of these Apsaras and in Bhuvaneshwar there are a lot of these um, temple sculptures the dance I was just doing was based on some of those um, you know sculptures coming to life. Um, I think what's really interesting is so we're here with this Yogini but if we look at the dating you know, we're looking at 800, 900. This is a really old piece, which I think is also indicative of the history of Odyssey itself, right? I think that's quite profound. Um, yes, definitely. Odyssey is one of the most class, uh, oldest classical forms of dance. Um, I wouldn't know exactly when it started, but um, it seems to be one of the most ancient uh, form. Um, but um, somehow um, through various stages, of the um, you know of the journey, um, it had lost its um, uh, momentum, and then it was uh, um, resurrected in the last 75 years. Um, but it's very much vibrant, um, definitely very much vibrant in Hampshire. Um, there are a lot of people practice um, all over Hampshire, South and um, sort of uh, North Hampshire, um, also in London and um, in North of England as well. Um, but definitely, these are some of the places where the uh, dance form is really. Um, visually, you know, um, sort of available classes are running, performances, um, several performances have also happened at the VNA as well, the British Museum, etc. Um, but also I wanted to show this book of a yogini, uh, a, a, a colleague of mine, um, Adhya Shadas, she has written, she, she is a, a museum curator um, in Orissa um, and a historian and various others hats she has got and a writer. 
of this book. So she is being researching a lot about these yoginis, the 64 yoginis um, in Hirapur, just outside. Um, and it's becoming more of a tourism as well. So how the arts is lending itself towards tourism and um, archaeology. Um, and people have been very, very keen to research all these things. Um, and we hope that more tourism comes to this museum as well, as a, you know, as a sort of, because it becomes more relatable, um, how the arts are able to bring sort of more tourism and find different ways of explaining these stories um, with expressions. Is there a sense that people who, who learn from you or decide to experience Odyssey in some way can channel some of these energies? I mean, some of them are ferocious, but some of them are very benign and quite beautiful. Um, yes, definitely. I think um, dance is um, all about positive energy. Odyssey definitely reflects that. Um, and when people are dancing, um, whether it's in a classroom, whether it's in a small place, a big space, an open space, um, there is a sense of happiness. Um, there is a sense of connecting as well. Um, and particularly the dance, um, you know, I would say any dance form, um, is accessible to anyone. Um, anyone can do it. And particularly we, what we have found, because we, um, when, I, when I started my journey in Hampshire, uh, we have got people from all different parts of the you know, countries and also different parts of the globe learning the dance. Um, and with COVID, it has become even more accessible. Different people, um, you know, like for example yourself, also learning um, in, in Singapore on Zoom. That trend has also happened. Um, so it has even become far more accessible. Um, and the energy definitely is very positive. Um, and also, uh, for younger generation, I find the concentration. Um, they're able to capture the you know, concentration. They're able to put that concentration into their studies. Particularly, I know of one child uh, whose mother said, um, you know, she, she, she's not very academic, but now her scores have become dif dif different because of the learning process, the understanding, her enthusiasm. She's able to put that from the arts into her academics. <laughs> Oh, my God. 